Okay, so just to have you starting off thinking, uh, what's the link between these three sets of pictures? So we've got the moon, we've got a guy running, and we've got a chart stroke table to try and explain how we go about learning a skill or process. Okay, so I think the thing you can see is, is that the moon, it's a cyclic thing, it goes round in circles, you get uh, the same events happening in a sequence, and uh, these are called the phases of the moon. Running is a similar thing, it also uh, is something that gets repeated over and over again in a, in a cycle, and uh, each phase can be described separately. And similarly, learning can be described as separate components that happen in a loop, and uh, you go the more times you go around the loop, the more expert you become at a particular skill. So, the, the, uh, and each of those components would be called a phase of learning. So the link between all three pictures is phase. Okay, and we're going to be using uh, phase to describe waves, as well as understanding some of the more advanced terminology of waves. Right, so we've seen previously uh, in the video on introduction to waves that when two waves are approaching each other on a slinky spring, two displacements like this, and they're both coming towards each other, the end result is essentially a sum of both waves, and you get a larger wave produced. Okay, this is slightly smaller. Uh, I've stretched this picture a little bit so it, it would actually be twice the size of these two images. A similar thing happens when you have two waves approaching each other, the red one coming in this way and the yellow one coming this way, and you get destructive interference or subtraction. So the minus 5 plus 5, you'll get just a flat line. So if you haven't seen that video already, I recommend you go back and watch that. Okay, so now we'd be looking at the ripple tank. Okay, so here again is just the basic setup of the ripple tank. In this set of it's above a uh, projector and light able to shine through it. We have a motor with an off center weight that is causing the whole thing to bounce up and down, sending ripples across the surface of this water, which we can then play with. and we have two sources bouncing up and down producing ripples across the surface of the liquid and those ripples interact with each other and there are certain spots you can see where the peak possibly and the peak of the other ripple from that source and that source you've got this circle and this circle for instance meeting here and that would be where you get two waves coming together like in this scenario producing an extra big peak or possibly they could be, these also could be representing the um, troughs of the waves, and you get an extra big trough. Uh, okay. All right, so now let's analyze this uh, in a more kind of distinct way. Okay, so I'm going to take this picture and just highlight where uh, I think the peaks are. So that would be the peaks of a wave. Okay, in between them, you'd find the troughs of the waves, these would be the low points of the waves. So you can see at certain points, like here, you've got a peak and a peak, you'll get an extra high peak. Here you've got a trough and a trough, you'll get an extra low trough. Okay? But here, something special will be happening. You'll have an, a negative displacement and a positive displacement, and they will cancel each other out. So, where the peaks meet the peaks, you've got constructive interference. So you'd get bands of constructive interference down here and where if you were to follow this red line if you were standing here you'd get you'd be on like the wave machine at the swimming pool you'd be jumping up and down a lot because there'd be a lot of displacement happening here however there'll be other spots where you get the troughs meeting the peaks and this is where you get destructive interference so if you were sitting here in the swimming pool you'd be pretty stationary so this is what's called an interference pattern now it's really helpful to be able to describe these things in terms of phase relationships. This is how um, how scientists talk about waves in terms of their phase relationships. So we're going to go on and look at that now. Okay, so we can describe this first just so we understand what was happening from a different angle. We've got two sources, and they're both sending out waves that are actually in phase with each other. Okay, and at a certain point on the screen, you'll see that they actually match up, and you'll get a red spot or a bright spot if it was light or if you're in the swimming pool this is where you'd be bouncing up and down a lot if we, so this is called in phase or constructive interference if 
we move a bit further across, because the waves, now they're still in phase here, they're still um, both peaks leaving the source at the same time, but because we're moving a bit along the screen, one wave has travelled a slightly different distance to the other wave, which means that they're slightly out of sync now, and they're going to cancel each other out, just as the waves add up. They can add up positively, or they can add up to produce nothing. Minus five plus uh, positive five gives you zero. So here we have destructive interference, and they're cancelling each other out. Okay, again a bit further over, and we get another constructive interference. And a bit further over, and now they're cancelling each other out, and again destructive interference, out of phase or destructive interference. And finally, again we've got another case of constructive interference, or being in phase. So let's talk about how we describe phase. Okay, here is half of a wave. So you could say this is a half of a wave, or you could think of it as like half of a circle. Now we've added an extra quarter of a wave. So we've got a half of a wave plus a quarter of a wave, three quarters of a wave. You can see how we kind of we could also describe it as three quarters of a circle. And we, the reason why I've got the circle here is a bit later on you'll see that uh, we also use degrees or radians to describe phase relationships in waves and uh, that makes more sense to most people if you think of a circle. Okay and finally the last bit of the wave so now we've got we had the three quarters of a wave and we're adding that last bit of the wave to it and we get to one complete wave. Three quarters of a wave plus a quarter of a wave one complete wave or one complete circle. So when things are in phase the waves are in totally in sync, or they could be out of sync by a complete whole wave. If you were to take one of these waves and shift it along by an entire wave, then they'd be back in sync again, and it would be in phase. So for something to be in phase, it needs to be exactly synced up. It doesn't matter if it's out of sync by a whole wave, it's still in phase. Okay? For out of phase, or perfectly out of phase, they have to be out of sync by exactly half a wave. So this situation here is basically this situation but with one of the waves shifted over by half of a wave and then they're going to cancel each other out perfectly and you've got an out of phase situation where you get destructive interference. Alright, so now there's another word that comes up a lot in this topic and it's coherent and incoherent. So what are coherent waves? So these waves are coherent. What that means is, is that as a, sorry, and these waves are not coherent. Okay, so what what does this mean? Okay, well I'm sure you understand the word coherent as in I'm speaking coherently or I'm speaking incoherently. Coherent means that they have a constant phase difference. Okay, the phase difference doesn't have to be zero, uh, but if the phase difference is constant, then they're known as they will be called um, coherent. In this case, there aren't uh, there isn't a constant phase difference, and the reason is they have uh, different frequencies. Uh, and that's going to mean that they cannot be coherent if they have different frequencies. So you'll get varying phase relationships. So one of the important things, or some of the important things in order to have coherent light, it must be monochromatic, mono meaning one, and chroma is uh, to do with color. So it's like one color of light. It may not be a color, it could be something which you can't see, like um, infrared uh, or ultraviolet, which you know is beyond our, our human range of sight. But... Um, if it's one frequency of light or one wavelength of light, then it would be monochromatic, and it must have a constant phase difference. Okay, so let's go on to look at some examples of coherent sources. I'm sure you recognise Dr. Evil here, and he wants his uh, sharks with lasers, lasers, as he says it. Uh, and lasers are a great source of coherent light. And if you ever do these experiments in school, you'll probably be using a laser. Okay, there are other ways of producing coherent light sources, and this is uh, Thomas Young, same guy for, who, who came up with Young's modulus and all of that, and uh, he used a single slit, and uh, he didn't use a uh, sodium light, but this is a good example of a uh, monochromatic, or nearly uh, monochromatic light source. It's a very narrow bandwidth of uh, yellow light it gives out, and um, so putting it through a single slit ensures that the light coming out on the other side is going to be in phase and then you could shine this at two slits and you could produce the double slit interference patterns that he came up with. Okay, Thomas Young didn't have equipment like this. He had to use sunlight uh, shining through a tiny hole in a screen on the uh, on his window 
and he had to work very hard to produce the results that he got. Okay, so I'm sure he'd have been very impressed with this setup. Okay, so let's have a look at some more ways of describing phase. As promised earlier, uh, describing angles in a circle uh, can help you think about how waves are described, or how the phase of waves is described. So this is half of a wave, it's also half of a circle. This angle would be uh, 180 degrees. If you continue an extra quarter of a wave, well now this angle would be 180 degrees plus the 90 degrees, which gets you to 270 degrees. And the complete thing, you guessed it, would be 360 degrees. A complete wave, you could say that was 360 degrees of a wave. Similarly, um, you can describe a circle in terms of radians. And uh, pi radians is half a circle, or half a wave. Now this would be half a wave plus a quarter of a wave. So if half a wave is pi radians, then half a wave plus half a radian, sorry, half a radian, sorry, a radian plus half a radian will get you to one and a half radians. And complete a complete wave would just be two pi radians. Okay? Now the only thing that is important when describing the wave interference is the phase difference, okay? Which is just how far out of step two waves are with each other. It doesn't matter if you are three complete waves out of sync. If you're three whole waves out, then you're basically zero waves out because you're still, as long as the waves are the same wavelength, the waves are still going to be matching up with each other and it's as if there is no difference between them. So let's have a look. Okay, these two waves could be described as a phase difference of zero waves out. They're zero waves out of phase. Or you could say there were three waves out of phase. Or you could say they had a phase difference of zero degrees. 360 degrees would be the same thing because it's a complete circle or a complete wave out. Or you could say zero pi radians. Or you could say two pi radians. Or you could say four pi radians. Or whatever. As long as it was a complete a uh, whole number of waves out, then it would be accurate to state it as that type of phase difference. So now let's have a look at a slightly different example. If we shifted this back a bit, now you can see I've shifted it back by exactly half a wave. So I can say it's a phase difference of half a wave. You can see here that they'd be cancelling each other out as well. You could say it's three and a half waves because it would be exactly the same thing. You'd still have the same difference of uh, a half a wave out, and that's the important thing. 180 degrees also describes half a wave out of phase. 540, which would be, again, uh, let's have a think, that is 360 plus 180, so that would be uh, one and a half waves out, which is the same as saying a half wave out. A pi, one pi radians, or pi radians, is exactly half a wave out as well, and three pi radians is one and a half radians, sorry, one and a half waves out, which is the same thing again. Okay, so the important thing here to recognize is these all these things here are equivalent. They all mean the same thing, essentially. Um, don't get confused, you know, between radians, degrees, and the number of waves out. The simplest thing to think of is just how many waves out you are, in terms of just whole waves. Okay? But if you want to describe things accurately, because things might not be out by one wave or half a wave, they could be out by a quarter of a wave or something like that, and it would be easier to measure them in degrees, and often in physics it's easy to measure things in radians because it makes the math simpler later on. Okay, so now let's have a look at an example A-level physics question. Pause the video and read, the que read this question. Okay, so hopefully you've had a go at the question. If not, have a go at the question now. Alright, so we're talking about a microwave oven and um, you're getting standing waves being set up. And hopefully later we'll look at standing waves in another video in more detail. Um, but uh, it's asking us to explain what is meant by the word coherent. So this is just a definition. You can memorize these definitions so you never make mistakes with them. It just means that there's a constant phase difference. It doesn't necessarily mean a phase difference of zero. Okay, now it says that two microwaves are arriving at point S the wavelength of the microwaves is 12 centimeters. Explain why S is a cold spot and assume that no other microwaves arrive at that point. So quite a few assumptions, but if there were just two waves arriving at this point S, one has traveled this distance and one has traveled that distance, let's have a look at them carefully. Okay, so path A, as I've labeled it, path A would have traveled 18 centimeters plus the 6 centimeters, which is a total of 24 centimeters. 
Path B, 30 centimetres plus the 12 centimetres, 42 centimetres. So path A consists of how many whole waves? Two whole waves. 24 divided by 12, which is the length of one wave. Two whole waves have travelled, uh, would have uh, um, been written out or drawn out as uh, the wave travelled to this point. Path B would be 42 divided by 12, which is 3.5. So it would be 3.5 waves. So now you can see there's a phase difference at S will be 1.5 waves out of phase. Okay, which is the same as half a wave out of phase. The main thing is, is because it's half a wave out, you're going to get destructive interference and you can have a cold spot because of that. Okay, so I hope this made sense. If not, leave a comment. Okay, so let's do a quick final quiz. Okay, so what is the best answer for the phase difference of these two waves? Okay, so pause the video and have a think about it. Okay, so if we have a look at these answers, is the phase difference 6 pi radians? Well, 2 pi radians is one whole wave. So this is saying it's 6 divided by 2. It's, it's three whole waves out. Well, if it was three whole waves out, it would be constructive interference. It's definitely not that. 720 is two lots of 360. So again, it's saying two whole waves out. It's not a whole wave out. 180 degrees would be half a wave out. So that looks correct. Now, it's good practice if you're ever given multiple choice to just eliminate all the answers that are wrong, just to, just to make sure. I mean, if you're not sure and you find one you think is definitely the right answer, and you can't tell if another one isn't, then go for the one you think is the right answer, obviously. Okay, so eight waves, eight whole waves would be constructive interference. 90 degrees, that's a quarter of a wave. And that looks like it's exactly half a wave out, so that can't be right. Four pi radians, again, like the six pi radians, that would be two complete waves out, which would be in sync, so that's not right. So I'm going to go with 180 degrees. Okay, again, choose what you think is the approximate phase difference for these pair of waves. Okay, so hopefully you've had a chance to look at it and think about it. Now you can see they're not exactly half a wave out, and they're not exactly matching up. So if they're not exactly half a wave out, well 180 degrees means half a wave out, that can't be right. Three and a half waves is the same as basically half a wave out, so again that can't be right. 720 degrees, that's two lots of 360 degrees, that would be two complete waves out, which would mean they'd be syncing up, which is not happening. Pi radians or one pi radian which is half a wave again which would be the same as above it's not like that so 90 degrees that would be a quarter of a wave out and that looks most correct so I'm going to go with 90 degrees okay so now the uh, the, cha the, um, the task is to spot the other one out in each line okay so the first one is done for you half a wave, one and a half waves, five and a half waves all of these will be producing destructive interference six waves that's going to be producing constructive interference so it is the other one out Okay, so pause the video and have a go at the next three questions. Okay, so for the first one, hopefully you've had a go at it. 720, that's two complete waves, two lots of 360. 900, well I'd have to get my calculator out. 360 is definitely one complete wave. My hunch is it's 900, so just check it. 900 divided by 360 gives you 2.5 waves. Destructive interference because it's a half a wave out, so it's the old one out. Okay, again, choose from these. Pause the video and have a go. Okay, so thinking about it, if it's an odd number of pi radians out, then it's going to be destructive interference. So this is an odd number, this is an odd number, this is an odd number. Because remember, pi, just one pi radian, is half a wave. And this is an even number, so this even number must be constructive interference. Okay, now we've got a mix of the different um, ways of measuring uh, phase. So let's have a think about it. 540 degrees. Now if I do 540 divided by 360, it's one and a half. It's one and a half waves. Two radians, that's one complete wave. Four radians is two complete waves. Okay, so 540 would be the only one that's destructive interference in this example. Okay, so thanks for watching. I hope you found this useful. If you have, subscribe, like, and share. Make sure you share with all your friends on uh, Facebook and YouTube. Thank you very much for watching.